as much as we agree on the higher level stuff, um, we are very there. There's a lot of discord. Well, I don't know um, if we I, even do agree on that higher level stuff. But actually, I mean, you know, it it depends on how much overlap of views are going to count as agreement, right? Uh, I I have very strongly libertarian inclinations, but then I'm not exactly a standard libertarian, and I I tend to be quite sort of unsure about it. Let's say, I also tend to favor a kind of broad church approach to it where you kind of in, where you encourage different perspectives and you know instead of just saying right you know this this is my position i am a i am a market anarchist that's it you know so i don't i don't know if i even have a particular position to be quite honest i have certain inclinations and even those inclinations i'm unsure about i mean all right hedge all you want um We, we've had enough conversations about certainty that I, I I feel like it is just hedging at this point uh, because we, we we understand that neither one of us is certain right um, nor even aspiring to certainty so yeah that's likewise a good point. Um, right like obviously these I, I'm I'm a bit I'm probably a bit more in uh, yeah intransigent about it than you are, but uh, that that's why, I mean, I resisted the, the libertarian label um, and instead prefer, prefer anarchism because it's just largely, it's more general and it makes fewer assumptions. Oh, really? Um, it has well, hang on. Wait. Things defined. Wait a minute. I call myself a libertarian because I think it's more general than anarchist. So I just define anarchism right. as a type of libertarianism. But this is perhaps just semantics. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Yeah. We're just, we're a hot mess. We don't know what we're talking about. Um, yeah, so, um, if, if you ask me to define anarchism, I would say a stateless society. Yeah. Um, any stateless society. Um, this is going to include, like, end-stage communism. Um, this is going to include, like, the ANCAP fantasies. Yeah. Um, this is going to include like primitivism, uh, just any stateless society. It would maybe include like forms of minarchism or libertarianism, um, which is why I see it as a subset. Yeah, I, I say all those things you just said there are types of libertarianism as I see it. So this is so strange. <laughs> but I think I think this is simply a product of regional differences. It's a product of the fact that you're in the US where there's a certain tradition of the use of the term libertarian and I'm in the UK where the term doesn't really exist in common political discourse and where people do use the term libertarian it tends to refer more broadly to include a whole bunch of uh, left-wing movements as well so okay that might be where the, di um, the difference is yeah, I, I mean, I still feel like, I, 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 it would be, it would be very strange if, um, if you defined just like base level anarchism as anything other than a stateless society. No, yeah, I, I, I do. I define it that way. But that's a form. That's one um, form of libertarianism. On my, on my. The way I would define the term. How are you going to have libertarianisms that aren't? I guess. I guess. Yeah, you could have like degrees of state. Like a, that, mi that a minimal state. The other... Minimal state. So. And minarchism. Actually, actually I, I, I do have, uh, I do have an argument that, um, that the minimal state uh, is not as minimal as libertarians think it is, and that it actually entails a degree of wealth redistribution. So, uh, so. I, my, my use of the it, term libertarian ends up being very broad indeed, actually. It entails a level of wealth redistribution. Yeah. Like, you mean formally? I don't... Um, well... Uh, actual entailment? <laughs> um, it, it does, it does if you accept has... certain other premises. <laughs> as long as you accept certain <laughs> other premises, it does, yes. It does. It I, does I, I, I'm entail. so curious. What are these other premises? So basically, basically, the idea, just to put it 
there okay put it I'm, I'm gonna say i was about to say i'm gonna put this simply but to be honest i haven't really thought about this in enough detail to put it anything other than simply so so the uh the idea goes like this what exactly is the point of a minimal state like what exactly is the function of a minimal state and okay. the answer to that is it's to uh protect people from rights violations um or maybe yeah. you wouldn't want to say rights violations maybe you'd want to say something else but it's basically the point of a, of a minimal state is to prevent people from killing other people or prevent people from stealing other people's things or punish people when that's they do pretty much it. Yeah, that's um, the point of a minimal state, right? Uh, we got. So the problem is this. Let's take somebody who's starving, doesn't have any food. That person steals some food from somebody who has a surplus. The question is, has, can that person be punished? And my view would be no, it would be wrong to punish that person. It would be unreasonable yeah. to expect somebody to respect another person's property rights if their life depends on them not respecting that person's property rights. So if that person okay. were taken to court, for example, uh, you wouldn't be able to actually punish them because they have such a significant mitigating circumstance. What that means yeah. is that if the state is going to act, what the state needs to do, if it is going to prevent rights violations, it has to make sure that all citizens are in a position where it's not morally acceptable for them to they're, commit they're rights violations. They're making more free choice than, yeah, yeah. yeah where, where they're not having to prioritize their like need to survive over the rights of other human beings. Yes. And so oh, I like if that. you get that, so then you get a degree of wealth redistribution from the minimal state. So that's the idea. Okay. Okay, no, I like that a lot. Oh, that's very sneaky. <laughs> I've gotten to it um gotten to it more through like uh geo libertarianism. Yeah. Um with the idea of uh property. Um and that's the so I I have, I have a similar position about like if you're going to have a state um well if you're going to have property rights um or rights at all uh it it doesn't really mean much to have those rights if you don't have somebody enforcing them okay i can i can get on board with that um but the foundation of those rights like how do you derive those rights um i'm not content just to say ah some people people just have rights yeah um there, there is this kind of like axiom at the bottom of a lot of uh, libertarian belief that um, you own yourself, therefore you own the products of your labor. Yeah. Right. And from that, you can get all sorts of lovely um, libertarian systems uh, if you just grant that one thing. But what you can never get to is land ownership. <laughs> Right. And some people go with, uh, what was it, uh, Adam Smith, who was like, ah, you mix yeah, your labor mix the labor. with the land. <laughs> Farm um, the land. Stir it up. Uh, and, I mean, that's fucking nuts. <laughs> um, <laughs> obviously. Um, I mean, maybe not obviously. Uh, I mean, it's, it, first of all, it's problematic because that's not necessarily an improvement. Um, but it also uh, does, doesn't make a whole lot of sense that you can come to own something that but by in, in this other way right so now we have two base axioms right um you own yourself therefore you own the products of your labor even if the products of your labor involve some stuff that is not yourself um like what that doesn't now that kind of that gets weird um and is like digging a hole an improvement Right? Like, what if I just dug a bunch of holes and I was like, this is mine now. Right? Yeah. Like, I don't, he, he has that idea of improvement built in there. I've just never found that satisfying. I, it, it, it convolutes the, think, the base axiom. I think the problem so, with that as well is that you end up having to, you, you no longer end up with a kind of neutral state, which is what a lot of libertarians seem to want, a sort of state that just makes no judgments on what people's lifestyles are, allows people to have different values. If you have to say, well, in order to acquire the land, you've got to improve it, you then have to make some sort of judgment about what counts as an improvement. And 
who decides. Which is a nightmare. Yeah. But also, like, what if I'm like, this is my meadow, which I go to and I draw in it, and I enjoy the trees as they are, and the little there's a little fawn who wanders through, <laughs> and like I, I enjoy her as she is, and the moss as it is. And somebody comes in, they, they chop down that tree, and they're like, well, now it's mine. Yeah. Um, you didn't mix your labor with it. I'm like, well, I sat here and I drew it. Um, that is labor, and it was better with the tree to me. I don't know. It just, yeah, it really convolutes the whole thing. Um, but another thing that really troubles me is it assumes, it does, it makes an assumption, which is that nobody owns the land um, until somebody does. Mm. And... That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, not given what we know about, like, populations and, <clears throat> um, you know, first peoples, especially in America, right, um, and Canada, I'd imagine, um, because they, they, they were uh, itinerant, uh, by and large. They, they, they moved around. Um, so, like, is, it was somebody's, even if nobody was on it or doing anything with it. Um, the idea that the land is nobody's is, is to me less intuitive than the land is by default everybody's. So you're actively taking from everyone when you make it private. Mm. Um, and I'm just not, yeah, I'm not sure I can get on board with that assumption that the land is nobody's. It seems to me more that the land is everybody's and now mixing your labor with it doesn't seem to give you any entitlement to it. Like, if you just, like, start with that slightly different uh, position, it's like, well, no, you can't just go mix your mix your labor with it. Um, and what tool are you just, like, the only thing I think that you can do to the land without using some more land, like, just using the one thing that we all agree that you own, which is your physical body, it's like, you could dig some holes. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, that's... That's it. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah, we've gotten to this point now where like people definitely own land by virtue of their labor, and it's just too much of a mess. I can't remember why I got on that subject. Um, oh, but I think I think from this idea that everybody owns it, um, you can get to the idea that if you do want to take it and use it privately, um, you should have to pay everybody for that for their, their deprivation yeah. of it. Um, so in order to access land and say, like, this is mine and mine alone, um, you, you, you need to be paying into some pool. There needs to be some concept of a community um, and some concept of um, universal property rights. Yeah. So um, I think, yeah, you can get to a distribution of, I guess, the, the means of production, if you want to get... <laughs> real uh, Marxist about it uh, by by observing that owning yourself and owning the product of your labor does not get you to owning land and depriving other people of the use of that land. Um, and then it's fairly easy to be like, oh, well, you just tax people yeah. um, <laughs> based on their use of land, um, their extraction of resources and wealth, and that goes to everybody because everybody owns it. And that seems to be much more equitable uh, than mixing your labor with the land improving it and much less like judgy judgy yeah as as somebody who is at least anarchistic as well um i would love to know if you think that we've lost view of this idea that our enemy our first enemy is the state hmm. and no, anything I that frame I it that way I wouldn't, Ooh, uh, how would I, you frame it? The reason why I wouldn't frame it that way is because states interfere in markets so as to promote the interests of often powerful companies. And I don't, you know, I think I think one of the things that libertarians in general have lost sight of, and this isn't, I'm not talking about you because, you know, you don't seem to, you, th this doesn't seem to be a problem with you, but it's, it's a problem with a lot of libertarians. Yeah. Um, is that they seem to... They seem to treat like private companies as if they were as if they were already existing in a free market. Um, yeah, and and they don't instead of as if they 
Yeah, and so it's like they say you know, they, they say that well, you know, the enemy is the state, ignoring yeah. the fact that actually the state sort of has its has its it has its roots in in everything throughout society, and so it really is. Well, and that's simple. why I wanted to start without a state, but. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, no, you're not wrong. Um, I mean, that's, so actually, uh, we have a term for them that I think you'll like. Um, and when I say we, I'm not sure what group I'm referring to. Um, myself and some other uh, maybe left libertarians or anarchistic libertarians or whatever you want to call us. Um, we call them vulgar libertarians. I have. I've heard that. The, I might have heard that from you, actually. But I've, I, yeah, I've heard that. Uh, yeah. I, I well, and it is. It, it, it's a it's a vulgarity of uh, it's it's a fundamental um, distortion and misunderstanding of those foundational principles. And definitely, those people have lost sight of the idea that like this does not exist in this beautiful, perfect free market. And well, I mean, when I when I was talking about land ownership, I, I had to concede. To reality at a point and say we we are now at such a juncture that all of this is moot because people really do like own personal property maybe not private property but personal property um you know like the land that their house is on yeah um as a product of their labor um and it would be unjust to be like, no, we all own this equally now all of a sudden, right? Like, we, we're we not in this vacuum, and I, maybe we ignore it because, ignore the fact that we're not in a vacuum because it, it's just too much to wrangle with, um, to try to account for that entanglement, hmm. those those roots. But, yeah, yeah, we're talking about the same people, right? They're the ones who are like, if Coca-Cola only wants to pay me a dollar an hour, then that's the... They worked hard to build that company. And from the ground, as if, as if this just like... This, this mythical creature that's Coca-Cola is just entitled to everything it has. And it didn't fuck around and get in bed with government at all to get to the position it's in now. This is why I, I really I want to start at a foundational place because I'm I'm not willing to accept that. Yeah, I the state actually honest, I, protects I, rights or creates equality or does like... anything other than enacts a more palatable version of the very things we are concerned about. I think part of the problem here is that if we're starting at that place, then it becomes a question. It you know it now becomes all right. What are the arguments for and against anarchism? And I just yeah don't know. In fact, part of the part of the reason why I don't know is because I don't care because of the sort of political position I hold, uh, because I sort of approach it in this very kind of broad church sort of way. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, anarchism sounds like it'd be great um, if for whatever reason uh, it, it ends up being preferable to have a minimal state. Well, that's that's fine, too. I don't have a dog in this fight. Um, kind of. Is, is it preferable how? Like, to you? Sorry? Preferable how? In what way? Well, I don't know. By, it doesn't matter, does it? Uh, the... Yeah, no, what do you, I'm just asking what you mean by preferable. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter by, by I mean, by, by whatever my standards are at the time of so, making the yeah, judgment. Yeah, but, I mean, but personal, personal preference not, is what you're talking about. It's you, not, you like it better. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's not important. It's just like, I, I'll just concede that. I don't, I don't care because... I guess another thing is that, like, well, if you're going to get anarchism, it looks like you'd, it looks like you'd probably go through a minimal state in practice in order to get there. You know, it would probably, you probably, you know, it's not like you'd sort of wake up one day and oh, the state has gone. It looks like there'd be a kind of dismantling process. Um, so we're kind of. And going, you think you'd just be like, all right, going we can stop state. dismantling now. We've, we've, we're good. We've dismantled enough. Well, it's more just like that's the that's the route we're both going towards anyway, and and we're so far away from. It's like you know, here's here's the minimal state, and here's anarchism, and at the moment we're like we're like way down here, and like way you know? here in Las Vegas yeah. is where we are now. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so it just doesn't it just doesn't matter to me, and therefore I haven't really engaged with the. Um, with with any arguments for or against that. Yeah, I guess this is why I don't really care about the like the getting there aspects because <laughs> it is not going to happen. So I just don't find it interesting at all to engage with um, 
the practicality of it or how are we going to get there. It is strictly like theoretical for me. Um, and, and that's where it becomes interesting. Okay. And it seems obvious to me that like it, it stays it, like at that point, that's when you need to begin justifying having a state at all. Um, right. If you're coming at it purely theoretically. Okay. Well, if we're looking at it's it, not gonna happen. okay. Okay. Why don't we just go right back to the foundations of negative liberty, which is what you take to be of primary importance. Um, yeah. And so, a necessity for equality. So the question there is, well, like, why are you assigning this so much importance? Obviously, negative liberty is, is good in various ways. We like to be free of constraints. We like to be able to pursue our own projects. But um, it's not the only thing that's good. It's not the only social good. There are many other things I, that we value. Social good is different than good. I'm, I'm, not... I'm trying to uh, express this objection in as yeah. neutral a way as possible, um, which is why I'm using different terms and speaking somewhat vaguely. Uh, the point I'm just trying to make is like negative liberty isn't only what matters. So why would it why would it be? Yeah. Why would we uh, when we're thinking about what the role of the state is? Why would we only be concerned with promoting negative liberty? Why wouldn't we also be concerned with, um, you know, and, and ensuring that all people have access to good food, access to healthcare, good education, etc. Uh, why, would we, we, why wouldn't we be concerned with promoting economic efficiency and all of this other stuff? I, I, I'm not sure that we shouldn't be concerned with it. Um, I don't know if there is any way to do both. Um, I think there's natural tension between... Uh, right, it, it, does, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that... Um, the more obligations I have, the fewer freedoms I have, right? That those two things yeah. uh, have, have that relationship to each other. So um, these, these other goods that we're interested in pursuing come at the cost of uh, maybe universal freedom. I don't want to call it radical freedom because I don't want to piss on Sartre. Um, but uh, yeah, you let, let's say like just you, total freedom, okay. right? Yeah. Um, you, they, it's a it's a back and forth between them. If you if you create an obligation, you lose a a, a freedom, as it were. <laughs> if we're gonna like count them up, um, so if, it, it just for want of a starting place, um, I guess we could start at like total control instead of start at total freedom, um, and start subtracting from it, which might be what you were suggesting earlier. Um, so we have lives that are 100% uh, prescribed to us. Would that be total control? Um, and some some system, some state uh, allocates and directs everything. Um, I don't know why why that. I'm not sure what the relevance of that would be in this context. So I, well, I'm, I, I'm trying to. I mean, yeah, you're right. I need to make a defense of why we should only be interested in negative liberty. But I'm saying um, that just the recognition that negative liberty and obligations or these other social goods that we might have an interest in yeah. are optional forces. Um, it doesn't assuage the need to, to make a case for negative liberty it, it points out that if this is something we agree we value, um, I guess I am shifting the burden of proof here. Um, I'm saying uh, I, I, a case needs to be made why we should give that up for these other goods. But so the case would. Or we can do it the other way around where we start out with, you know, no freedom and make a case for why we should have it back. I'm, I'm happy to go in either direction. So but it does seem we. Somewhere. When you when you said a case needs to be made for why we should give up negative liberty for the sake of these other goods, <clears throat> why why isn't it just enough to say, well, because we you know we we value, uh, for instance, everybody having access to clean water, 
And, do we? And, and that's, well, and let me just finish, um, because okay. if you object to that, you'll object to this even more strongly. Uh, we, we, we value, uh, sorry, what did I say? We value everybody having clean water. And in fact, like we, we value that more strongly than we value certain negative liberties. So my, uh, my liberty to do what I want with my surplus wealth is just less important than um, ensuring that we don't have people dying because they don't have access to clean water. And yes, there's a trade-off, but that's why you yeah, should Yeah, I, I, um, there, there's this uh, interesting <clears throat> philosopher, uh, I believe it's John Hospers, um, who kind of wrote about this. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll get on board with you. Um, I'm not going to be a monster. Uh, I, too, would happily give up... Um, you know, some pennies of my wealth or something, whatever amount it would take to ensure that people have water, but I'm not prepared to make the assumption that that is right or good or that everyone should be prepared to give that up, right? So it's not a voluntary giving up. It is at least at times going to be a forcible removal. Yes. But what, so aren't you making the assumption so, that everybody... Just saying that you value that, um, is, you know, and I, me agreeing, I value that. Um, it, that, that. That doesn't get us to everyone values this. But aren't you making the assumption that everybody values negative liberty? Um, I don't know if that's an assumption that I can... I, I, I don't think that's... This is going to be weird. How do I come at this? Um, in the same way that existing is not a property, um, I don't think that's something that people cannot value. Um, I, I think it's just a brute fact, right? Like if I, uh, it's it's a brute fact in in so far as we are agents and we have agency and we have that's, to do things. Isn't that a there? But that's a different right? thing, surely. I mean, if we're talking yeah, about not, negative liberty, we're talking about the absence of constraints imposed by an authority yeah right and so that's not just a brute fact because there's all sorts of things that do in fact violate negative liberty yeah but as as far as like it would be weird for me to say like i value my ability to move my finger right um that would be that would be very strange to me um i value my ability to um digest the food that I consume. Yeah. Um, but this is just this is what we do naturally without impediment. Um, it, it's not something so much that we value as just our natural state is free, right? Um, at least free from constraints of authority. In order to do anything, we have to, to some degree be free, right? Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the, the the best way I can put that. It's weird, but I feel like I did it. Yeah, but <laughs> it still it still seems like you're like you're you're valuing right an absence of constraints imposed by an authority. Now, if like if 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 most people or if just some people value having a society where we ensure that there's nobody dying of not having access to clean water more than certain types of negative liberty i mean i don't know how is is it do, do you have a response to them or does that just ultimately come down to a kind of no it just seems like you, I, I, i'm gonna take the position of somebody even though personally like yes i'll give up my pennies or whatever to clean the water i i i, I think this will go more easily if i uh if i take the position of somebody who does not want to give up anything so people can have clean water is that all right you can say yes take that position uh, it doesn't really right. make much I, difference uh, I, I mean, so um well i i just to to me then in that position um it's going to look like you're just imposing your values on me okay. right uh, okay yeah right so and but, I'm but like, now, why do you get to do that? <laughs> okay, but now let's take the position of the person who is dying from not having access to clean water. I think what they would say is, yeah, but by not ensuring that 
I have access to clean water, but you're imposing your values on me, right? You're imposing your uh, no, preference for negative liberty thing. upon me. Okay. Um, and right up until that moment, that person, well, I mean, even in that moment, that person is still valuing their free agency, their ability to enact their will, right? Um, you can't get out of a valuing of the ability to enact your will. All right, so that, that person might be saying, I value um, clean water more than negative liberty because I'm, I'm dying of thirst. Yeah. Um, and it's like, well, no, that's not, that's just not possible. You are at all times valuing your ability to enact your will. Okay. I, I like that you said that because that sort of leads me to like maybe it maybe I'm maybe it's a different way of putting the same objection but it, or maybe it's a slightly different concern about the concept of negative liberty but it would be the thought that well we don't it's not actually negative liberty that we value right what we value is uh the ability to accomplish your ends or the ability to accomplish your goals and one of the ways in which you're prevented from accomplishing your goals is when people impose constraints like uh, states uh, taking your wealth, for example. But there's another way in which you can be frustrated from accomplishing your goals, which is when you just don't have enough resources to uh, to do that. Um, well, that so... is why I did not choose those words. <laughs> I said, um, enact your will, right? Yeah. Um... I mean, I, I, there's another way, which is, uh, it's, it's not physically possible. Like, it is my will that um, I take flight in this moment. Um, or that I have the ability to teleport so we can have this conversation in person. Um, right? Like, that is my will for we, myself. We, we wouldn't be having um, this conversation and, in person if you, if you were teleported easier, here. Uh, right? um, that's, that's not what we would be doing. I don't, are you still recording this? I can cut that out if you, <laughs> if you prefer. I don't care. Um, <laughs> anyway, it, it would happen eventually. Um, so, uh, I think, I think, I hope. Anyway, um, so, uh, oh, you've flustered me with that. Um, no, it, it's, yeah, the, so the, these, these things can be frustrated in lots of ways if what we're looking at is... Uh, the accomplishment of the goal, but I, I, I think I, do, I don't think that that's what we're actually valuing. Um, we're valuing the capacity to attempt it. Um, it would be very strange for me to say. But just to be clear, uh, the capacity to attempt it, you understand that uh, as in a sense that it doesn't actually depend on any external resources at all, right? It's it's purely kind of. Mm -hmm a matter of internal will. Well, yeah, like, I, I, I want a thing. Because if, and... if, it, if having the capacity depends on having any kind of resources for it, then it looks like you're moving more towards a kind of positive liberty conception. Maybe we need to clarify capacity. Okay. Um, and I see that you're trying to move me there, um, and it's sneaky. <laughs> uh, but... Um, yeah, because, yeah, all right, uh, capacity. Um, yeah, I, 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 it might, we might just go in circles, uh, because when I say capacity, I mean I can attempt it. Um, nothing, is, um, nothing is stopping the attempt. Um, so I, I, I obviously don't have the capacity to fly, mm -hmm. um, but I have the capacity to attempt to fly, right? Like, Okay, I've tried to fly, right? Yeah. Um, that was my trying to fly face, uh, <laughs> which would also be better in person, uh, right? Or like I, 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 yeah. So maybe is that what you meant by external factors? Um, because it's it's the my em emphasis there is on the attempt. Um, yeah. Not on having access to the resources to get to like steps one through three of the attempt, right? Um, and then fail, right? Yeah. So I can I can try to draw an apple, um, <clears throat> but if I don't have pencil and paper, 
Um, I'm not going to begin the physical aspect of the attempt, but I'm definitely free to like look around and say, ah, is there pen pencil and paper? Can I get access to the pencil and paper? Um, nobody's going to punch me in the face if I pick up the pencil and paper that's on my table, right? But if there is no pencil and paper on the table, then I have still attempted to draw an apple. I, I'm not drawing a line at the, like it has to be X amount successful in order for the attempt to have been available. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I also wanted to present to you a, an objection. Um, oh, I don't like where we left that, but okay. Sorry? Um, go ahead. I don't like where we left that, but go ahead. What was wrong with where we left that? Nah, it's fine. I, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it going in the back here. What? Yeah, but what happened? I mean, if there's more to discuss there, it's. No, I don't like... think. I don't think I'm right. I don't. I, I, I think. I think there's there's still a problem there. Okay. The, well, the reason and, and why. I think that's a good objection. No, no. The uh, the reason why I started moving on to this is because. Uh, I, I think this is where the problem really lies, right? Okay, so, okay, go for so it. So initially, um, what I had done is kind of challenged you to say what's what's like actually important about negative liberty, right? And I'm assuming that I'm assuming a certain conception of negative liberty here. Uh, I think that maybe the issue about the value of negative liberty comes out a bit more clearly in the problem I'm now going to present. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's why I, I was moving on. But it's, uh, I, I actually asked you about this before. It's, it comes from a guy called James, James Sturber. And uh, I thought this was kind of a clever objection. So uh, I'm, not, I'm, for what it's worth, I, I'm, I'm not sure what to, sorry? I said you did do some research. I'm excited. Yeah, I, I had heard about this before, but I went and checked and checked uh, the, the argument. I, I'm not sure what I would say about this. So uh, I'm curious what you say. Um, so, uh, in the standard way of presenting the kind of case that we just talked about, where somebody has a lot of surplus wealth and somebody else has not got enough to satisfy their basic needs, the way that libertarians usually think about that, uh, or indeed the way that anarchists usually think about that, uh, or at least anarchists of your sort usually think about that, is that uh, what's at stake is the negative liberty of the rich person versus the maybe you want to say positive liberty or whatever of the poor person the right. yeah, yeah yeah the entitlements maybe yeah, i don't want to say that. all these words are so like loaded yeah okay okay so, but, um, but that's how what people conceive of it so what sturber says is that's that's actually just wrong right that actually okay. what we have is a conflict of negative liberties because uh so there is. The oh, I might have seen this before. All there's right, the, there's the it. negative right. liberty of the rich to do whatever they want with their surplus, but then there's also the negative liberty of the poor not to be interfered with in taking from the rich surplus goods to satisfy their basic needs. And that's, yeah, a, that's I've, a negative I've, liberty. I've come across things like that before. Yeah. So it's it's a ne oh. it's a negative liberty because it's a liberty of non-interference, right? The in order to satisfy that liberty, the rich person doesn't have to do anything; they just have to leave the poor alone. Um, so you've basically got two options, right? You've got... Oh, that's a weird way to frame that. Okay. You've got go either the rich should have the liberty not to be interfered with in using their surplus to satisfy their luxury desires, or the poor should have the liberty not to be interfered with in taking from the rich what they need to, to fulfill basic needs. And so the question is just which of these liberties is morally enforceable? Um, There's and of course, weird stuff in there. Um, first guess. of all, I'm curious, does he, does he say, um, to, um, does, does he specify, uh, to basic needs? Yes, I think he does. I think he does. So, he, he draws the line there, like, if I, um, if I'm stealing bread, well, I, I'm saying stealing, is it okay that I say stealing? Um, if, if I'm acquiring let's, somebody let's else's bread. Take, okay, yeah, put it, put um, it on Or sufficient money for bread, um, if I am... <clears throat> requisitioning <laughs> um <laughs> it's uh <laughs> somehow uh this this that's that's gonna be within my negative rights um but if i'm requisitioning a flat screen tv that's not 
uh, going to be the negative right, he would say. Well, no, presumably not, because I, I mean, may, I guess maybe you could take the flat screen TV yeah, and use it to buy. Immediately, that's the problem is, yeah. is like, why? And what is a basic need? Like, how much can I have, like, the crust of a bread if that's all it keeps me from, like, dying, right? Or could I grab a bit of cake while I'm requisitioning, <laughs> right? Uh, well, I think, I think actually... It's, it's going to seem arbitrary. I think there's certainly a problem here of vague boundaries, but I guess we can just start with the assumption of just what you need in order to survive, right? So you can take the food, right? But you can't take the flat screen TV uh, and you can take just you enough food in order to survive. Cake? Yeah, I, I guess you can take the chocolate cake. Uh, Why? Well, I don't know, maybe that's... Look, yeah, no, this, maybe, this maybe, is not an insignificant problem to me. Maybe, this is maybe, like a... This is a big deal. Maybe lots of poor people have gone into the kitchen before you and the chocolate cake is the only thing that's left, right? Yeah, yeah. I I just, I like, so the, 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 I, I want to, I want to like stop and hover around this for a minute because first of all, there's a huge value judgment happening there where like, when, whenever you have these like arbitrary delineations like this, mm. um, there's a value judgment going on. What if I'm addicted to nicotine? Uh, which I am, uh, and there's a pack of cigarettes. Like, can I take that? Um, I, I feel like that really distills the um, the, the the fact that there's a value judgment, right? Uh, some people, people who understand nicotine addiction, uh, might be inclined to say yes. Like, yeah, that's a basic need now, right? Um, and people who do not might say, like, no, you're fine. You, you're not going to die without that. And it's like, yes, but I'm going to become useless and terrible, and my quality of life is just going to be abysmal. Yeah. Um, so are we talking about quality of life here? In which case, why not the chocolate cake and the flat screen TV? Um, what is it that we're trying to satisfy? Are, are, are these, is it a negative liberty because it keeps them alive? No, no, no. So... Uh, Why is it a negative okay. liberty? So there's also, for example, the negative liberty of one rich person to take uh, the surplus wealth of another rich person. Or there's the there's the negative liberty of a rich person to so take from a poor person. Is the nature of surplus that makes it? Or, or, or is this person just being super literal about um, non-interference? I think it's uh, a fair, yeah, a literal interpretation of non-interference. Um, the idea is that look, neg his point is negative liberties conflict. I think that's that's what he's saying. I don't right? know so, that they do. I don't know that they. Well, certainly so, not based on that story. Um, I'm not. So why wouldn't why wouldn't it count as a negative liberty for um, like, one well, person to all, take? I'm not so sure that um, negative liberty means non-interference. That that that's a one for one. Um, definition I'm, I'm not sure that that seems very strange um first of all because it doesn't involve the state at all and that is my dominant interest um and dominant concern uh people doing to one another i'm, I'm not uh not as absolute on um but it seems like I don't, I, I don't think there's a conflict so much as there's just a story that's going to have an end uh, that we don't particularly like. Uh, like, let's take it one step further, okay? So, uh, I have a surplus, you have a surplus. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely interfering with you by accessing your surplus. Like, what if you're sitting on it? Um, but you're not using it, um, or what if it, well, then you can't, I, I you can't it take it? But if it's just in my house, you just walk into my house and take it. It's then... just uh, so, so it, like yeah, this is this is it's so literal. Like, I mean, his, I mean, the point is right. You, we would say, okay, you actually shouldn't be allowed to do that. I mean, that's pretty much everybody. I I imagine most people would agree that if we're both rich, right? Then yeah, you can't just come into my house and take my tv but i think what i think sturber's point is it's not it's not like in virtue of the fact that it's a negative liberty there are i guess what he would say is that 
the we provision... just want to get somebody going and taking their bread back. I think what I think what he would say is that the TV back and and just this constant swapping of property. That's yeah. that's the story with the weird ending. Or you're going to get somebody but, interfering. But his point um, is, if that... I set a booby trap, if I set a booby trap, am I? Are you interfering with my booby trap, or is my booby trap interfering with you? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got really excited. No, that's, that's, that's not a it's not a eye roll. That's that's good. No, um, I agree. That's the problem. I I'm not sure. Data of booby traps. I'm, this, I'm not sure what that how that works with this. Um, but I so to just uh, let me try to f f uh, phrase his point the way he might put it. I think it's that the provision of any set of negative liberties uh, involves various costs and one of those costs is going to be that uh, you end up interfering with other negative liberties so you can have a particular bundle of negative liberties but by 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 providing people with a particular bundle of negative liberties you deny them certain other negative liberties so uh the negative again i'm just i, I don't know that that the... Why is that? A, why is that a negative liberty? Like you are very clearly interfering with somebody. You're just not physically interfering with somebody, mm. right? Um, this is. Uh, I, I many years ago I dated this guy then, who said what... that um, libertarianism was. <laughs> He's a socialist um, at the time. Said libertarianism was was two people going, "I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you." Just in each other's faces forever. <laughs> you can't do it. You can't stop me. I'm not touching you. Um, and it seems like that's this guy's concept of uh, negative liberties, right? Is just I'm not touching you, um, but that's still okay. Uh, it's just this really physical, like limited view of interference. And I, I'd say this is only a problem if non-interference just means not not touching someone, <laughs> right? Yeah, but the Does but the point on is any that... other view? Sorry, because I, I don't think that's what non-interference is. I don't think that's what negative liberty is. Um, I would say if you well, the point is in order to I, I went to work and while I wasn't in my car you took my car, mm. um, you have definitely interfered with me. You've not physically interfered with me, but you have pretty apparently interfered with me. Fair enough. But then if you wanted to uh, stop me from doing that, you'd have to interfere with me. Likewise. Um, yeah, right. But so the, the initial breaking of negative rights, though, is when you initially interfered with me, <laughs> when you took my car. Um, and there's this... Um, this interesting philosophic concept, or well, libertarian pseudo philosophic concept, that when you uh, commit that initial act of interference, you quit yourself of any claim to a right not to be interfered with. Um, which I don't think is too crazy. Yeah. So now I can just interfere with you freely by retrieving my car. Um, <laughs> So, and it would be it would be very strange to claim a right to not be interfered with immediately after you've claimed that somebody else doesn't have that right by taking their car, right? Uh, that that's the sense in which you quit yourself of uh, that right or that claim is you've just undermined it with your activities. It'd be inconsistent to then claim that you do have that right, if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. What's your instinct about him? I don't know. You just you defend it. You you put yourself in a very easy position, but um, what do you, what do you reckon? Don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. I'm, I. I. Uh, I don't know. Um, You've been I, thinking it, about it. You went and found it. You were yeah. like, oh, this is interesting. Um. But, but the but again, right. It's like, well, what's he? What's he actually arguing for? He's actually arguing for a social system where everybody has uh, sufficient resources, and you know, I've I've already attempted to kind of build that into libertarianism myself. So, you know, uh, if if it en if it ends up being the case that negative liberty ha has that entailment too, then uh, all the better for me. But I don't think it does. 
that that view um, negatively does. I don't know that, but you're you're right. Actually, that that's like a really bad argument, actually, isn't it? And um, it's like <laughs> obvious what's wrong with it, but it didn't seem that way when I read it. So maybe I just presented it wrongly. Uh, you see, this is this is the problem with sort of talking off the top of you. Well, I'm not off the top of my head because I've got notes here, but uh, well, and I've never, yeah. I've not really seen or thought about that argument before. So we're we're in the same position. You don't but have to defend to be... it. You can say I was initially interested right. in it, but there's got to be it more. Seems uh, really there there must be a, a response to that because that's a re so that point you made about how um... I'm not touching you. <laughs> no, 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 no. The point you made about how. Uh, <laughs> The person taking the stuff violates, is is in violation of the rights, right? Oh, you like that, yeah. Well, yeah no, I mean that, that's that is an obvious response, I think. Now, once you say I it, it's really like, like that too. For yeah. some reason, but um, why does that? Hang on, libertarians I'm... like a lot of libertarians just really don't like that argument, uh, and I'm not sure why because I just I think that's the idea that you can, you quit yourself of that right okay, is so... just totally powerful. So I think, so the reason why it counts as a negative liberty for the poor to take from the rich in order to fulfill their basic needs is, is just the fact that you're not requiring the rich to actually do anything. So if you imagine like a producer with a great surplus, um, you know, if, if you're thinking in terms of positive rights, you would be requiring the producer to pre create more stuff in order to give to the poor. But if we're thinking in terms of negative rights, it's, it's just that... You know, the producer, the producer doesn't there. have to do anything, right? Um, but that does seem to be a very, like you say, that's the sort of view of libertarianism as in, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't speak to it's, that guy anymore, but if I did, I would tell him that we invented I'm not touching you libertarianism. Right. But, Thanks to him. <laughs> but then, I, I mean... The, the, but then, no, there's a question here about what exactly negative liberty is supposed to amount to, right? Because if negative liberty is just the absence of certain constraints, then it looks like you end up facing Sturber's problem. Because what he's saying is, is the poor have a negative liberty to take from the rich insofar as the, the rich can't impose constraints on them, right? So if, if you're thinking of negative liberty as absence of constraints, as non-interference, then then you get that problem. So how are you thinking of it? it how, how does your view differ from from that? From I, you, you thinking of it in terms of non-interference? I, I kind of spun out for a moment um, and went down my own line of thought. Um, and I kind of want to be a devil's advocate for a second. And I, I'll, I'll... Sorry, I, I... I had a thought. I'll come back to this. Um, but... Um, the the way you phrase that it it it, I, I, it seems like non interference um, that he's trying to frame it as um, actually being an obligation that these people have right they have an obligation not to interfere with you um, so yeah. does that make sense yeah um, but I think that's a fairly common way to think about it yeah. Um, well, and, and it could be, it, it, like, you, you can see that as negative or positive, I suppose, right? Mm -hmm. um, I have an obligation not to interfere with you um, because you have the negative right to not be interfered with, but you also have the obligation. So, yeah, this, this symmetry there, right? Um, I think that's, you need that to get his argument, uh, or to get the people he's responding to. He's, he's responding to people who imagine this, um kind of symmetric relationship right or maybe he's not i'm not sure um uh, maybe i need to come at this differently it was just a off the top of my head yeah. thought but um effectively so um what i said earlier that got you kind of excited was that um you quit yourself of this right right um if you if you do interfere with somebody um so Imagine, and this would be this would probably be the accurate representation of my position, which might help us answer your question that I zoned out on. Sorry, um, which is to say, rather than seeing, it, 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 sure we can see it as a framework of um, I have the negative right to not be interfered with, and you have the negative right 
to not be interfered with um, and vis-a-vis -vis that creates the obligation to not interfere with one another right yeah mm. is, is that fair um, but you don't have to frame it in terms of an obligation you just use that that principle that I put out there that if I do interfere with you um, it's not that I failed an obligation on my part, it's that I've quit myself of the right to not be interfered with because I am rejecting that as a right. If you don't have that perfect symmetry, um, you, you don't have everybody having the right not to be interfered with. So it seems like the person who is trying to have their basic needs met, right, or trying to go meet their own basic needs, to yeah. put it in more positive terms, um, is quitting themselves of the right to not be interfered with themselves because they are interfering with somebody else. Yeah. Okay. But this kind, of, it, this sort of brings up a what's maybe a slightly different problem, um, which is. Let me think about how to put this. So, if we're going to. Um, if we're going to be enforcing property rights that oh i mean obviously you know you're an anarchist and you're going to probably <laughs> okay, object let's, to let's, let's enforcement um, um enforcement ideas so okay look up upholding property rights you could just sort of take it as a as a principle as a as a a general principle right that if you're unable to satisfy your basic needs with your current resources then you may take some things from people who have a surplus, right? And you could just had say, that's a principle which applies to everybody. Everybody can just, live by that, right? So, so that's, that's, that's one sort of possible social system, let's say. Then there's another possible social system where, where we don't have that, where we uh, enforce the sort of the standard libertarian property rights, where there are you know, legal restrictions on my ability to go and take from other people and so on. Um, and I, I guess the question is, like, why is that latter system preferable to this other possible system? Um, what I'm, is it I'm that... not sure. I'm not sure it is. Oh, okay. I, I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I was just analyzing that argument. Um, I wasn't saying, like, people shouldn't be. Uh, I, I, no, no, I'm, I'm bringing up, I think, a different point here. Um, I think this is a different point. Uh, I'm. I mean, I'm just kind of. Just yeah. What no. You said. It, it, that. I, in fact, actually, when you when you spelled that out for me, or when you just asked me that question, I was like, meh. Actually, that that does sound better. <laughs> um, it sounds like fewer people are starving, and um, you know, there are fewer people, um, you know, living out that like a Christmas Carol nightmare, um, right? Of just like hoarding massive amounts of wealth um, because their hoard can be interfered with. Okay, cool. Um, that sounds like a nicer state of affairs, but what, what does make me cautious about it is um, the same thing that made me cautious about you deciding that uh, people should have access to clean drinking water um, and that it was worth giving up some negative liberties or some some property for that um is that it, it's a, an imposition of a value judgment right and it does it at a few points so it does it when we say having their basic needs met right because yeah. now we're drawing that line and we're saying well not chocolate cake or definitely not a flat screen tv um and yeah we're creating a hierarchy of values that isn't at all obvious Right. I mean, yeah, you shouldn't have to die, but we're also drawing a point where, um, you know, what if I, uh, what if I took a book from a museum because I needed to, I, I was desperately, wildly curious about the contents of it, and I was working on a, a theory or an argument or something, and I believed that reading this book would advance that. Um, and, and that would be of great personal life satisfaction to me, mm -hmm. right? It's not, uh, that looks to me like a basic need. It's not gonna, I'm not gonna die if I don't have this, but 
um, if I can't pursue these things, then I my life is barely worth living. Yeah. Right. Um, or entertainment, for that matter. Right. Um, I can also think of think of ways this this could be uh, really menacing to uh, to women specifically, but men as well, um, where. Maybe my life is not worth living if uh, I don't get oral sex on the daily, right? Um, or something along these lines, right? We, we're, we're making these quality of life judgments that entitle people to take things. Um, and that's really troubling because we're saying, well, it's okay if you take the things that we decided are really important. Um, what happens if it's different people with different values than you and I, and they decide that blowjobs are super important, mm. like right there with food and water? <laughs> and I don't think it's far fetched. Why, why did you phrase that as an if? I mean, when you were talking to me, because <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to make you the bad guy here. Um, I didn't want to say that you were just going to go forcibly take blowjobs. There's a surplus of them, after all. <laughs> like. <laughs> You could get, be getting a blowjob right now, and you're not. You're being deprived of this very basic need, right? Um, and I, I've, I've spun this in a ridiculous way, but it, this is this is why we need to be really careful when we say, um, when we start drawing these lines to say, like, okay, well, you can do this to somebody else. Yeah. You're entitled to do this. Um, but only if it's really important, um, because there's a, there's a value judgment in there. Okay. Um, and I'm not just on board with it. I um, um, I guess there are, well there are two objections that spring to mind. Um, so first thing is, aren't you also going to end up making certain value judgments insofar as you have to decide what counts as legitimate property acquisition? So you have to have some sort of system in place for saying under what conditions somebody actually owns a piece of property obviously if you don't have that then you know poor yeah, taking uh, surplus that's... from the rich is no that's no problem for me to walk into someone's house and take their stuff um like but how do you decide what counts as their stuff and how isn't that going to value judgments um, this is a huge problem and this is part of the reason that i am um flirting with that type of uh geo-libertarianism um that I mentioned earlier. Um, okay, I can accept that I own myself and the products of my labor. Um, I don't have any. I, I that that it seems obvious that I own myself. Uh, I will say that that seems like a brute fact. I've had uh, philosophers challenge me on that before, but that is a very long conversation. I can't justify it. Hmm. But I own myself. Well, I I, um, I mean I think. Well, Okay. Yeah, I don't know I, if we should go into that. But um, what? <laughs> I said I don't know if I was going to. Yeah, I I think that um, all ownership relations are entirely conventional and I mean subjective. So, you know, I don't I don't think it's a fact that you own yourself. But then I I don't know if we should go into that here. I I I, I, I oh, I'm I am myself. <laughs> which is as much I I wanted to do an analysis of what ownership was. Uh, back in my the early years of my undergrad, and somebody was like, "That's not even a reasonable question," <laughs> and I was little and sad about it. And he's like, "Nobody does that," and I'm like, "But we talk about ownership all the time, and I don't have a clear idea of what it is to own something." Um, but uh, the idea of inalienability, um, right? Inalienability, inalienability, um, uh, really resonated with me and it is certainly true that i cannot be separated from myself um and that seems to be like a semi-relevant part of ownership we'd say if something can't be separated from something else uh you can't take it from me um that i i own it uh, i i don't know maybe not but anyway that's floating around in there to whatever degree that's i i think i can get there by just saying like I'm inseparable from myself. Uh, I am myself, and my labor would not exist without myself. Um, I do these things. Yeah. Um, that's as close as I can get to a justification for it. But I, I think most people would want to say individuals own themselves or have possession of themselves. 
I don't know if those are different. Um, and I'm fine with that, but I don't know how that gets you to property acquisition or ownership. I'm not sure it does. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure it does. I, I sometimes have inclinations to think that no, everybody owns everything, um, except for each other. So I don't know. Yeah. It turns into this weird hippie communist thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't sorted that out yet. I don't know. Um, I, I, I kind of like the fact that when we initially talked about the idea of doing a video on libertarianism, I was like, okay, that'll be nice. That'll piss a lot of people off. And I'm now, I'm glad to hear that this is also going to piss off all of the libertarians as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, your roundabout get us to this, like, uh, hippie commune. Um, uh, yeah. where Nobody's doing like this. Everything. <laughs> um, but there's no free love, um, <laughs> because that's the one thing. I'm just really afraid of being forced to give blowjobs is what inspires all of this. I'm like, would this system force me to give blowjobs? If so, I don't like it. Um, <laughs> no, uh, that, that's, that, that is a, it's, I'd say it jokingly, but that's actually a pretty good, uh, I, I think that's the thing we should ask ourselves, maybe not blowjobs specifically, but could you derive from the system if we don't know why it's just basic needs, if we don't know what basic needs are, if we don't know where we draw these lines, can we imagine the system being used to justify people being forced to perform acts they don't want or um, being said to not be entitled to their own bodies. Um, and at that point, if the answer is yes, I, I think it's pretty obvious we should throw that system out. Okay. Uh, well, uh, this, this actually brings, I suppose, brings me in a way to the second objection I had in mind, which is that I can imagine somebody saying um, just something like, okay, it is, it is really difficult to draw lines and it's not at all obvious what counts as a basic need but the mere fact that the you know the mere fact that we have vague boundaries doesn't mean that we can't make judgments about clear cases and the example of somebody who just doesn't have clean water right that's just an obvious example of a basic need uh so we can work with that right that gives us enough to work with uh, in terms of justifying I'm scared, wealth distribution. I'm scared if I know it and, when I see it. I'm scared of that. And, but here's a, can I just sort of make this yeah, argument a bit more robust? I can imagine somebody just doing a kind of Morian shift on this one and sort of saying, well, like yeah, well, I don't actually like it, but um, it's... You like it a little. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I do Go bring it. it. I do bring it up a lot, don't I? But no, you know, what, <laughs> yeah. you know what the Morian shift is. It's just yeah. any. Whoops, sorry. I, I have just, this hand. Oh, no, I just, I right. just, yeah. But so, so, in in this particular case, I think you can see how it would apply. It would just be any kind of political system which entails that we should that it's um, going to be okay for uh, people to you know, starve to death while other people potentially have very large surpluses of wealth is just clearly unacceptable. Um, and, and the intuition for that is more powerful than any intuition you might have that you use in an argument for libertarianism or for uh, any kind of anarchism or whatever. Right. So I, I, I don't think that's true because I just, I just gave you one, which is any system that could be used to um, deprive people of their personal property rights, like their body rights, um, could be used to like just condone rape and obligate people to uh, perform live lives of servitude. But and that's troubling to me. As a matter of fact, I mean, any system that creates obligations for individuals could create those obligations. And that should be horrifying to us, and that's clearly unacceptable. But as a matter of fact, though, that, that just doesn't happen. Like, there are loads of social systems that, that have certain degrees of wealth redistribution, but do not require people to give blowjobs. Um, and there have been loads of systems, uh, they, they're, they're more antiquated, um, that did that treated women and all sorts of people yes, like but property. It's not, it's not like it's entailed. Like, I mean, it's not, it's not like once you have uh, wealth redistribution in place, you're going to be forced to give blowjobs. Uh, and you can... without wealth redistribution, it's not an entailment that people uh, die for want of clean water. Yeah. 
That is also true. It's a potential um, consequence. So what would the, I guess the point would be then, well, we just need something to ensure that there's a safety net. And if nobody needs it, then, then it doesn't matter, right? Uh, like if, if, in fact, if in fact we have uh, this free market system and uh, enough is being done by the market to ensure that everybody's satisfying their basic needs, then nobody's going to use the safety net. Uh, the, the point of having the safety net is just if people need it, it's there for them to ensure that they're not going to starve to death. Not sure quite understand that, um, how you got to that. So the, uh, I guess the, the, the way that the response to you would go would be like, what, so what you were saying is there have in fact been systems or I don't know if you said there have in fact been systems, but there could possibly be a system without enforced wealth redistribution, but where yeah. people aren't starving to death. Right. Yeah. So I feel like the uh, objector to your position could just kind of grant that and say, well, like in that case, nobody would need the safety net. So yeah, that the safety net only comes into what I'm saying is the, once... the creation of the safety net, the creation of the obligation leads down that, you know, dystopian path I drew. Um, so that's why not. Um, that's why you don't do that because it's a means of depriving people of what is theirs. Um, yeah, right. But, but then similarly, you could now say, okay, but the removal of any kind of safety nets leads down a dystopian path to people. Yeah, yeah that, that is why I said I'm not sure to, how the starving, starving to death. To, or how it's a response to uh, that quandary we have where on one hand, we have systems that lead to people dying horribly, potentially lead to people dying horribly uh, for want of having basic needs met. And we have other systems that uh, potentially lead to people being deprived of their bodily uh, autonomy or their body autonomy um, or their property right in that sense, right? Um, yeah, they, they, it, 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 that's, this, this is the problem and I'm not sure saying like, well, let's just have a safety, let's just go down that other route that can deprive people of their body autonomy um, and then just not use it. I, I don't find that, status. that's not a solution, that's not a response, that's just a preference. Uh, you're like, that one sounds better to me. Um, yeah, uh, it, it, what, what we end up with and what we have now is I think something that at certain points in its development uh, among between both our countries um, acknowledges that there's this push and pull between this and it just has become this massive bureaucratic thing that doesn't make a whole lot of sense but like there's a safeguard here on this side and then there's one here on this side and um, look if that's what people want that's what people want um, I, I, I wouldn't deny that. Uh, I, I don't think it's the best we can do. I think the best we can do is create a system where the state, the, a, a stateless society where people choose to stop one another from dying for want of having their basic needs met, um, where I voluntarily um, help those people uh, and happily give up a penny because that's the kind of person I am, right? Um, and yeah, that's, I think there are two ways to get to libertarianism or anarchism. Um, you can get to it because you're like, I think I'm the ubermensch and I want to just keep all my wealth and fuck all the poor people and they're all just greedy and lazy. Or you can get to it by saying, we don't need the state to be good. I resent that assumption. Mm -hmm. The state deprives us of rights and it's useless. And we can get there on our own. I, I, we can and well, will feed those people, clothe those people, house those people, and give them clean water. But you, you see, don't have to force us. Now, it just occurs to me uh, that that there's a sort of from 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 my point of view at least uh, a kind of benefit of a, a social safety net uh which is that i'm not i i think i would sort of prefer to live in a world where we have lots of people with just very different sort of values and where there are just lots of completely selfish assholes 
um, I actually kind of yeah. quite like the selfish assholes. And if you've got if you've got a safety net, <laughs> then it doesn't matter. No, you know, people aren't going to starve to death as a result of this. I, I, I like having a world where there's loads of psychopaths. I wouldn't want to live in a community where everybody is a moral saint. Uh, so, um, well, Kane, you have interesting values. Yeah, uh, um, <laughs> you, you want weird things. I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, no. I mean, I'm still like, I, I would still be. Look, I can give a quarter to UNICEF or something, right? Uh, and still do blow and fuck hookers. Like <laughs> everybody's not like, oh, I'm. <laughs> A moral saint, right? That's not happening. Um, I'm not advocating for that. Uh, it, it's a, it's a, 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 a it, it's just a recognition of choice. Um, I, I will spend some of my quarters doing blow and fucking hookers if that is my want, and some of my quarters I will make sure I don't have to step over thirsty people on the way to the blow and the hookers, right? Like I, I, I think people are essentially good. Um, and if you leave us to our own devices, we will do that. And I would evidence um, the fact that you just want that safety net there so you don't have to worry about it um, whilst maintaining that you're a terrible person. Well, you didn't say you were a terrible person, no, but you like, like terrible people. Yeah. Yeah. I think you've said that you're... you're a bit of an, an asshole a few times um i, I actually and, no I, I am one of those terrible people actually just to be yeah just yeah, to be straightforward, yeah. So I, I, I kind of assumed my that dad, um, my dad has a <laughs> phrase that i like and well it's not his phrase it comes i i think it actually probably comes from from military circles but i don't care i still like it it sums up my attitude quite nicely which is it. What does it? Uh, let's hear it if you're looking for sympathy you can find it between shit and syphilis in the dictionary and <laughs> oh, that's so bad um but you've interrupted my my tirade that actually people are good um because even the monster who uh just told that joke is like i don't want people to be dying for want of clean water and i want there to be a social safety net um we don't need it um We'll but, do it on our own. It's, it's also... We don't need to create this monstrous authority that deprives us of rights um, and takes from us I... in order to take care of each other. That is the worst fucking myth ever created, that we need that to take care of each other. We do not need to be told to take care of each other. You don't need you, you've, it. You've got the psychology totally wrong, right? It's it's not... I mean, for me, right, if, if I'm being completely honest... What do you honest, want the safety net for? If, it's, if I'm being completely honest, I think that there is a substantial selfish motivation all right i am not i'm not particularly rich i don't think i'm ever going to be i think there's a good chance i could end up in a position where i just like need help and i mean it might be that nobody wants to provide it so that's why i want a safety net that's the really the main motivation for me it's entirely self-interested maybe not entirely think but still sure. largely largely self-interested i think we'd take care of you maybe for our own self-interested reason because you've <laughs> you're it's a, the world is, it wants to keep you around so you contribute meaningfully to it um and we value that right uh this is how artists survived for the longest time right um and again this this isn't like some hoity-toity fairy tale um communities took care of one another all the fucking time of weaker members all the time there are most of human history this this idea that we need the state to do it is just pure bullshit we don't well i guess actually i'm, I'm glad you said that because it, it brings me on to you know an, an, another sort of concern for your with with your general position which is just like this is totally utopian in like just in the sense that first no, of all, it's yeah, never I'm going to happen. No, and fucking hookers, maybe. It's, it's... Um, and there are still people who need to be hookers because that's their best way to get money and live the life that they want to live, right? Like it's not utopian. Well, it's it's utopian. It, I mean, in so far, in two ways. Uh, first of all, there'd be the objection that it's never going to happen. Although actually, I think we've already talked about that and you've accepted. Yeah, that this I know why we even have a conversation. Uh, Come on, don't and, do that. Don't do me like that. And and then there's <laughs> then there's this. Just this this point that you're relying on the goodness of people, on the uh, yeah. compassion of people. Um, 
And and here's here's, here's a worry about that. It can be self interest. It can be self interest. Um, but here's here's another here's a sort of more precise concern, which is that a lot of people might have the attitude that, well, yeah, I I want to help out. I want to give money to charity, but all of the money that I have would just be a total would just be a drop in drop in the ocean, right? It's not really going to make any difference. So there's no point in me doing my part. So having the state force everyone to do their part, as it were, uh, that that then provides, that then allows those people to do what they would in their more uh, uh, compassionate moments have wanted to do, but just seen no point in doing. Um, I'm not- I'm worried that if you I'm don't have willing... that coordination, uh, it's just not gonna yeah, happen. Yeah, no, you're quite, yeah, it certainly makes it easier. Um, but I am not willing to give people power, authority, money, guns, prisons, and national borders so that we can organize a charity. <laughs> like, it's not, that, that trade is not worth it. Um, I'm not going to let them put people in jail so that we can be like, no, but really your penny will help. Right? No, no. Fuck that. Yeah, you're right. It definitely makes it easier. It definitely makes it easier. At what fucking cost? Sorry, I'm swearing a lot. And I'm talking about hookers and blow, and I'm realizing that this has actually been interesting enough that you might publish it. And I'm imagining one of my students coming across it and being like, does my professor do like sleep with hookers and do blow? <laughs> so I want to like add a caveat, like, just in case, but no, I do not fuck hookers and do blow it just maybe it appealed to you i was trying to trying to sell you on but, well my, i don't uh, i don't do blow myself, either yeah. i mean um, uh, but the hookers yes <laughs> no. um yeah if they're around why not um i suppose but yeah uh it, it, it get, get very drunk and sleep with chippendales dancers <laughs> is maybe my uh <laughs> my version of it but no i just i did feel the need to put that out there because i like this i'm enjoying this and i think other people might um but uh no it's 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 not worth the it's not worth the compromise um not gonna do it and also these people take the hookers and the blow away and they're like no you shouldn't be you should be giving to charity you shouldn't be if you do hookers or blow we're gonna put you in one of our cages that we made like Fuck that! You create this massive power disparity, which again, it's 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 not in what world but, is that worth it? But wait, I wait, really wait like a minute. NASA. I really like fucking. I really like making. Well, not fucking. I really like making sure that people don't starve to death. I really like literacy. I work at a largely public institution and get paid by the government, and I'm super glad that institution exists. I am so psyched these things do um i don't think we're incapable of doing them on our own yeah it makes it easier to create a state but it's not worth the trade but look at what the state does but the, I mean, it's horrifying so not worth the trade so i so just uh yeah what i what i wanted to say there was Sorry. um the state does all of these really terrible things right but it also does certain things that you think apparently are quite good. Some of the yeah. consequences Basically, are rather like, nice. Um, um. So the thought would be, well, like, just make sure that we have a state that does the good things that you like and then doesn't do the bad things. And of course, you are not going to, possible. you're going to, no, you're I'm going not to, going where you think, you're going to where make do you some, think I'm going? Now, now you're, you, it, I imagine you would want to make a sort of slippery slope style argument. No. Or something no. like that. That seems to be the kind of way you were. Well, what 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 would you say about that? Then? I, I, I I was I was I was pointing out that both of these things have their their slippery slopes. Um, no, what I'd say there is that the violence is inherent to the creation of the state because it's the only means of enforcement that they have. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 No slippery slope there. No, no, it was just because you talked about how the state prohibits people from doing hookers and blow, but obviously you could have a state that didn't have those laws. Uh, you can't so... have a state that doesn't uh, doesn't have jails uh, or guns or... Yeah, you could get rid threat. of the jails, I think. 
Um, you can't have a state that doesn't have violence. Yeah. Violence is inherent to the state. It's not inherent to anything else. Um, isn't it inherent to any kind of enforcement of yeah. rights over property? Which yeah. you would need in your system as well. I don't, you, again, I don't know that we need them. Because you'd, you'd have to have some sort of violence in order to prevent people from stealing things. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not saying, like, it's without violence, um, or threat of violence. I'm saying there's no authority created to enact this violence in accordance with its own morality. Um, if somebody tried to steal my shit, I would probably throw a brick at them. Like, definitely. Um, a stateless society, I'm not gonna, yeah, create this utopia, um, and be like, no, there would be no violence. Um, what there wouldn't be is a massive, powerful entity with a monopoly on that violence, um, nor the use of it in, well, it's not inherent to it, the use of it in nonviolent situations, right? Um, which, again, the state does. If I didn't you know, give my due to, uh, to the Clean Water Fund, uh, the state would escalate that okay. to violence so in order to enforce it. If, if you recognize there's going to be violence either way, and if you accept that... And there upholding... is a different kind of violence. Yeah, but wait, wait, let me just finish my question. So if you okay. accept there's going to be violence either way, and if you accept that upholding any kind of property ownership is going to require violence, right, what... Why, why exactly is the fact that violence is inherent in the state necessarily a problem? Like, well, what, so, the... I, mean, I, I feel like you, you kind of begged the question there. Um, I, don't, I, I, I don't accept that violence is necessary in either version. I acknowledge in what, that uh, in, in, either, in either, like, either the anarchistic society or the society with a state. Um, if these are the two we have. Um, what I said is I acknowledge that, yes, that's how you would enforce property rights. Um, it's not inherent to it. Uh, it is inherent to a state. But why is that a problem? Um, well, I, I can imagine a society without a state and without violence. It's highly unlikely, but it's not inherent to it. Okay, so uh, but why, why, sh why does it matter that, it's, that violence is inherent to the state? Well, it's a guarantee um, of it. I still don't Mind see... But I don't know why that's a problem. What? You have a system here that may have violence, or it might not. You have a system here that guarantees violence. Which system do you choose? Well, when you say may have or, may, or may not, I mean... I mean fucking logical entailment of it it's necessary yeah i don't see why that matters though because in the other system it, it's, it's just not, it's it may not be logically entailed but it's going to happen so you're going to get violence either way hey it might be a fraction of a point in favor of the stateless one but it's still <laughs> it's still one it's not a logical entailment um so i, I did want to stop you there and say no it's not necessary um but i mean I, that, that look oh god i can spiral with this um look like the fact that you're accepting it as an entailment of the system, I think, says something about what the system is likely to produce. Whereas if you take the system where it's likely but not necessary, um, that's a fundamentally different society. Mm. I don't really see that why, to be honest. Fundamentally different things. Um, and again, um, and maybe this will get kind of slippery slopey at this point, but the system that entails it um, comes with, well, the, the state system, uh, comes with uh, all these value judgments and things that come, you know, in order to be able to enforce it. Um, whereas the other one, it happens organically in the course of humans interacting with each other. Um, and that's less offensive to me. That's more palatable to me um, than this all judging powerful, violent entity that has monopoly. If you have a democratic state, 
then the value judgments also arise organically through humans interacting. In I fact, mean, even the, any the, kind the, of state would, the, wouldn't they? Because it's not like the it's not like the value judgments are just fixed for eternity. States change. That's not that's not what I meant. I meant the violence. Uh, you you steal something from me, and I throw a brick at you. That's not any prescribed act of violence. Um, that's something that happened between two people. Um, whereas if somebody breaks a law in our society with a state, there is a mandated, prescribed act of violence that the state perpetrates against them. Whether that's voted on or not, whatever. That does, I, I wouldn't call that organic. Um, I would call that by fiat, right? <laughs> um, yeah, maybe a bunch of people voted for it some years prior, um, but that doesn't that, yeah, that, that's not what I meant. I meant it's circumstantial. It happens when it happens in the one society as a product of people interacting with each other. Uh, you try to steal something, I throw a brick at you. Um, actually, I, I, I wouldn't throw a brick at you. I long ago decided that if somebody tried to steal my shit, I'd just be like, man, this sucks. Um, like, I don't want to hurt you. It's not worth it. Um, so Anyway, but uh, the, the, the state society, that is... It is again. It it has it has this authority. It has a monopoly on enforcement, and it has a, a prescribed violent activity for a, a potentially non-violent behavior. What is this? This is a hot mess. Is what it is. Well, you're just gonna have a ton of footage of me saying. I am. Horrible. I am recording right now. So I, I I figured you can have my my defense of cat calls, but uh. So I, I go hiking uh, quite a bit. Uh, you know this. It's why it's so hard to find a day when I can do this. So, uh, and I'm very enthusiastic about things. Uh, I also love eating bits of chocolate myself and uh, burritos so spicy that I'm sick the next day um, mm -hmm. and have to delay recordings with you. Uh, and I make a lot of noise about it. Like... When I'm eating a really good burrito, I'm just like, fuck, yes. <laughs> and I'll like try to give people like tastes of it. I'm like, do you want of this burrito? What? Because it's Why are you giving it away? I want to share the joy. It's so good. That's not um, what you do with good food. You don't give it away. Listen, I I'll get more. I, I'll I, just I keep... record burritos for everyone. I'm very generous. I keep I um, keep all my chocolate in my room, right? And I, I say to my I say to my brother, I'm like, look, if you've got any chocolate in the fridge, I'm going to eat it, okay? And I, I mean, I'm not going to give you any of mine, but I'm going to eat yours, okay? It's going to get eaten. Right? <laughs> that's, that's what I'm like with food. You're, you're, we're very different people. Um, this is I'm much more like free love about this shit. So I uh, I no, I I love it, and I want to share it with other people because like there's the finite value that I receive from having this burrito, which I admit, like, I'm definitely, like, Nozick's utility monster. Mm. Like, I fucking feel joy <laughs> in this monstrous way, almost, but, and I'm very loud about it, uh, but I want to share with other people because that is a way to make the excellent burrito even better. If I can, if I can be like in ecstasy eating this burrito, and I can share it with some friends, and now they're enjoying the excellent burrito, the the joy and just like the this raw utilitarian sense is so magnified that like I I I need to do this when something's really good. So when I'm out hiking, um, I like to hike with other people. I mostly solo hike just by necessity it's hard to find people who will come out backpacking with me but if i'm with somebody or if i'm alone quite often i will see a mountain or like a frog or something and i'll just be like oh fuck look at that incredible fucking frog gaze about what are you doing you beautiful bitch like i fucking love you frog you are incredible and i'll like watch him hop around and i'm just very enthusiastic about this and i i shout at nature um really loudly, almost by compulsion, where I'm just like, God, I, have you, like an incredible sunset. Have you ever been with somebody and you've just like, what even is the sky doing? How does that exist? How do I get to be alive? What is this majesty? Fuck, I don't know what to do 
with all these incredible feelings I'm having and I'm, I, I want to just announce it to the world. Or if you're like super in love, you've heard people say like, I want to shout it from the rooftops. Um, so I have this impulse uh, to, to just really be very loud when I am excited about something. And I was, uh, I was bicycling to work uh, and receiving quite a few cat calls and it was just like, Fuck, bitch, get it! And I was like, God damn it! And then I was like, Wait a second, I'm the mountain, <laughs> I'm the frog. Like, this is just this is a beautiful human impulse. Just to be like, Did everybody just see the good thing? <laughs> There's a good thing, <laughs> and I think we all have this. Like, that's that's where that desire to be like, oh, I'm in love, and just like shout it to the world comes from when we're having these positive emotions. Some of us just for whatever reason, need to point and just be like, look at that awesome thing. And uh, I, I, I don't like the cat calls. I don't feel flattered that I am the mountain. Um, I'm not nearly as dope as a gorgeous mountain uh, that I feel the need to swear at. But I think the, the, the impulse is one that I too have. Wait a minute. So I can't really blame the cat callers. Why don't you like the cat calls? Um... Usually because, like, I'm trying to do something else and it's distracting. Mm. Like, if I'm on my bike and I'm, like, sweating and somebody is like, Bitch, you look good. I'm like, I'm trying to go to fucking work. Um, like, I'm, I'm doing a thing. Don't talk to me because now I think you have something to say and I'm going to, like, look over here and I might run into something. Like, I'm going for it, you know? Um, and sometimes I'm just having own thought, Right? because I am not actually the mountain or the frog. Well, I guess maybe the frog is having like own thought. He's just doing his frog thing. Um, and it's very distracting to be pulled out of own thought. Um, but I don't like, strongly hate the cat calls, but I just made a defense of the cat calls because I think, I think we all do it. Like if we're enthusiastic people, if we're excited about shit, uh, we all have at some point in our lives felt the need to just like point and shout at something and just be like, oh my God, I like this. <laughs> Does everyone know that I like this? This is a, can, can everyone see it? Look at it, I love it. It's so good. I wanna put my dick on it. <laughs> just, that's the, the cat callers. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, I, I don't know. I think if that's where it's coming from, it's coming from the best place. Uh, but there's a strong if, right? Like, if that's where it's coming from. <laughs> so It's not even a flattery thing. It's not even a personal thing. I think it's instead, it's a defense because it says something about, like, this potentially uh, beautiful human impulse to announce and share joy and uplift things that we consider valuable. Um, usually quite loudly, um, and maybe ineffectually, like me swearing at the mountain certainly doesn't achieve any end, but <laughs> I still have that impulse. So if you understand catcalls that way, you can make your peace with them. <laughs> <laughs>